never liked I never liked seventeen fret banjos, and that's just a personal thing. I found them boxy and kind of heavy and hard to play because of the short neck. You tend to need heavier strings on a seventeen fret, and I like. And this is why I love the 22 fret, is because I can use even lighter strings and you got more tension. I would say size of human probably plays a big factor as well. Like I had a 17, I had a 17 fret banjo because when I picked up banjo first, I was 10 and I wasn't really quite big enough to hold a, a proper banjo. So yeah. there's probably that, but I do I do think you're right in general. Yeah, my first banjo would have been a 17 fret made out as well. Oftentimes that's that's the deciding factor, is the uh, fretboard geography, you know, it, it's the fretboard to human quotient, you know. Yeah, because it, it is it's it's a tricky stretch. Like if you think about mandolin, which is in the, in the fiddle octave, the reach is still quite doable. When it translates over to banjo, it, the reach gets quite pronounced, you know, especially from say like F natural to high B on the E fret, for instance, it's quite a stretch for a lot of folks. So so that that you're constrained by that boundary. Otherwise, Endo would have a 46 fret banjo. Massive, <laughs> like Ravi Shankar, massive <laughs> cross option that just takes over the whole thing. Yeah, but like I, I think just get your kids playing on the 19th prep and stretch out their fingers. And when they're asleep at night time, just go in and give them like stretch them out even more so it's really long. <laughs> That's not professional and technical advice. Stretch your children's fingers. One, one thing that's handy for your listeners, and I, I, I think it was Tom Custom who builds banjos that really nice banjos as well. Um, they, he, he said to put alcohol, like rubbing alcohol on the tops of my fingers when I was a real small kid, because I used to find fretted instruments hard because my fingers get sore. And I remember when I was a kid, I'd be dipping my fingers in this rubbing alcohol. This explains so much. My hair. Yeah. <laughs> and then I love the taste of it. <laughs> um, so I actually had a deering banjo for a time. My first bar armor banjo was a deering. But then I moved back to Ireland and I had to consolidate instruments because I couldn't fly them all. And I sadly had to sell off a lot of my instruments. I have a space in my office right on my guitar stand for a Deering banjo. It's a space. <laughs> it actually says Deering on it in expectation. Uh, That's is awesome. Really, it's been really, really nice. It's been a lovely interview. And we love what you're doing. We've been. You know, we do all jokes aside, we really are big admirers of what Deering has been doing. We meet them, you know, meet you folks at Merlot Fest and many different festivals now. And it's just amazing to see the community. I think community is so important in niche music. Um, and to see the community that is so supportive uh, through the Deering initiatives, uh, it's great. And you see folks that have bought a Deering banjo way back in the yonder years or just bought one a year ago. And they're all chatting and talking about Trading tips and everything, and I think that's a lovely thing. So, hats off to you for creating that lovely community. It's, it's amazing. Yeah.